Let's talk about what's going on with artificial intelligence and the evolution of physical therapy, specifically the physical therapy admissions process. So I've been talking to a couple AI developers. They're sharing their information with me. There are currently AI software on the market where it records the audio from your treatment session and tries to turn that into a treatment note. I love the direction all of this is going, but I think one of the things that nobody is talking about where the technology is ready right now, like today, is in the telehealth space. So there's two things I want to share. One is a new patient admission process. In the new patient admission process, at least the way we've always done it, basically we take a phone call, patient says, I need to schedule physical therapy. Right at that moment, we want to accomplish a couple things. We want to start building the relationship right there. We want to set the tone. We want to set the expectations, a la Jerry Durham. Uh, and, and that's really going to lay the groundwork for a successful patient experience and patient outcome. I like to take that initial contact, book the evaluation within 24 hours of the first telephone call, but then use that time on the phone to do most of my initial evaluation, whether it's me, the therapist doing it, or it's one of my admin team. It doesn't require a therapist to ask all of the questions like, tell me about your condition, what will we be working on, what makes it better, what makes it worse, what other interventions have you tried? We could collect past medical history, surgical history. We could collect information about complexities and comorbidities. That point on the phone is where we start to solidify that relationship. And that does not have to be a physical therapist because that is not a billable event. But what that does is if we can reduce the friction of that first phone call, collect all of that information that we don't have access to as private practice you know, standalone uh, physical therapy providers, we can then put that information into our evaluation templates, into our plans of care. Once somebody tells me, I just had a knee replacement, I just had a rotator cuff repair, or they tell me I've been dealing with some back pain, some hip pain, osteoarthritis, whatever the condition, I pretty well have an algorithm that I could follow to at least get the initial uh, patient admission process through 90% of the work. Now, if we use AI, AI on a recorded line, and of course we get consent and permission to record the conversation, but AI can translate all of that information into a usable format for our documentation system. And then once that happens, I'm face to face with the patient, either as a mobile therapist going to the patient's home or as a brick and mortar clinic, and I can complete the evaluation. I can usually initiate treatment a little bit sooner. Remember, the evaluation is an untimed code. There needs to be a face to face component, but the minutes done doing evaluation don't count toward treatment minutes for other timed code interventions. So I can usually get an additional treatment unit of one-on-one, -on -one, either exercise, activity, neuro re -ed, manual therapy, whatever you prefer, if I do that initial telephone admission process. So it just facilitates the workflow, it improves the relationship, it gets that patient into our ecosystem, builds rapport, builds confidence, and then we can start treatment just a little bit sooner. There's huge value in that. The second element of AI related to telehealth specifically is we're on a telehealth platform. I'm talking to you right now through video. That video is getting recorded. YouTube will transcribe that video automatically for me. That transcription could then be processed by AI and turned into a treatment note. In this case, show notes for this YouTube video. But the idea is it's a much easier way to do it, at least initially with the technology we have available today, than trying to do that as an in-person activity. I've been playing with different ways of recording it audio during in-person treatments. It's hard. There's other people in the background. There's different voices. I can't always pick up what my patient is saying on the audio recording. So it's just not there yet. The technology, the workflows haven't been developed yet. But for telehealth, which telehealth is still covered by Medicare through the end of 2024, we have the recording. We have the best audio we're ever going to get. We have two-way communication. The AI can process that. 
So uh, I, I, I'm a huge fan, you guys know this, of a hybrid model where we do some in person, we do some online telehealth. I think at least those telehealth sessions, we can start utilizing AI documentation systems today. And then with proper training of the AI, we can have them train against the CMS uh, Medicare documentation guidelines. We can have them train against Aetna's documentation guidelines, UHC's documentation guidelines, so that we can even further customize what kind of documentation is generated by the AI and maintains compliance with the specific payers. I think that's where we stand right now and we should be doing it today.